Cooking Up a Storm, sponsored by West Virginia Northern Community College Culinary Arts Program. We're cooking up a storm at West Virginia Northern Community College with Chef Chris, and we're doing a little Oktoberfest for you today. We're going Oktoberfest. Uh, sorry, it's getting to be that time. We're cooking up a strum, as they say. Strum, strum yes. Strum is, is German for storm. Correct. So there we go. Try and teach you a little. We're both German. Correct. And I was actually born there. Okay. A long time ago. Really? What part? Do you know? I was born in Frankfurt. Ah, okay. So. Have you ever been back? I have not, unfortunately, no. If you ever get a chance, go to Oktoberfest in Munich. Oh, it's it's amazing. It. The beer is amazing. It is. We I, are unfortunately not having any beer with our dish, but this would no, go great with beer, right? That is correct. It would. So what are we making today? All right. So what we got today is we have a um, chicken schnitzel. Schnitzel. Uh, schnitzel is basically a breaded product. You, we're doing chicken. You could do Wiener schnitzel, if you remember that. Yeah. That's veal. Um, you have uh, pork schnitzel. You have chicken schnitzel. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to have that with a... I have a little schnitzel right in case of the wrong schnitzel right schnitzel, now. Dude. Oh, okay. So a little bit of mushroom demi, and then yeah. we're going to braise some uh, red cabbage with that, um, mm -hmm. with some apples. And then um, we're also going to have um, our apple pie at the end. Okay, Ooh. I'm going to show you how to do a deconstructed apple pie. Something that's kind of, kind of off the wall. Okay. So the first thing we need to get going is we need to get our braise going for our... Um, I burnt my pan up here. Now, so. now you are using chicken because of the West Virginia Northern Community College thundering chicken, right? Otherwise, um, I can't. I refuse to answer that on the grounds uh, of the Fifth Amendment. Okay, may, okay. So, but yeah, chicken. I, I prefer chicken personally instead of um, veal. It's it's a little healthier. Um, I feel like I made it with pork once. You have. You probably have. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Wiener Schnitzel a la Holstein? No. You know what that means? No. A la Holstein refers to having it cooked with a fried egg on top. Ooh, a little extra protein. That's right. So what I've done here is I've got some just regular cabbage braising, and then I'm adding some apples to it because these are Granny Smiths. So they're a little tart. tart a little tart apple. Little same stuff we're going to use, I, I honestly, in our, um, in our apple pie as well. So we're just going to braise that down and cook that so it gets kind of soft. That, this is really old world right here. This is like I picture like grandma, red cabbage and granny Smiths. And that's the thing you have to remember about uh, German food and other foods. If you look historically, um, everything was braised. Everything was cooked long term. Yeah. There was nothing about quick, fast and easy. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's why, you know, I try to emphasize when I'm doing that. So while that's working, Jeff, what I'm going to have you do is start on your... Um, I'm going to turn it on first. Start on your the mushrooms, because we're going to saute these mushrooms before we add to a demi-glace I've already prepared. I think I hit the uh, temp button no, one didn't. too many times. Nope. No? Uh, technology is great when it works. <laughs> there we go. You got the magic touch. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. We're going to have to go back here and do this. Oh, it's okay. I got a brand. I got a brand new toy, and the toy doesn't like my induction burner. So you That's, want me to uh, put the uh, mushrooms yeah, in here? Yeah, well, let it wait a little bit. Wait, wait, little, wait let till it get hot. hot. Let it get hot. So that's the thing. Whenever you're uh, sautéing something, you always want to make it hot, because you ever taken vegetables and yeah. just put them in a pan that's cold? Uh -huh. and they get all watery and mushy, right? Yeah. That's a problem. You need to get them in a hot pan, sear that, create that seal around the vegetable, so all that water doesn't leach out. How do you know when it's hot? Um, you can tell by the viscosity the of the oil really move, either moving around easy. Okay. Um, if it's bubbling, that's almost too, too hot. hot. Yeah. And if it's smoking, that's way too hot. Yeah. Don't even touch that. Okay. So don't don't do that. Um, it, with this uh, with this particular range, probably you're probably good now. Okay. So go ahead and throw those in there. And these are just uh... those are just regular mushrooms. You can use your favorite. Do you want to use Bella's? You want to use regular food service mushrooms, whatever you want to use. That's up to you, okay? I was, right, supposed, so I was supposed to flip, but I'm already using this. <laughs> Old you, habits die hard, right? You, you were telling me that you, t you tell kids we're going to practice flipping this. Go at home while they're watching TV with an SOS pad. So if you want to try this at home, an SOS pad in your pan, your skillet, 
and gently do it. Now, see, I, I don't have the flip. I see, can get it going. See, if you when you're watching the weather, just sit there and flip it, all right? And as you get madder at the weather, just flip it harder, okay? <laughs> all right, so while you're working that, Jeff, I'm also going to come up here, and we're going to show people how to bread our chicken, because that's what our chicken schnitzel is. Chicken schnitzel is, again, it's basically a breaded product, is yeah. what it is. So we have a chicken breast. As you mentioned earlier, sometimes schnitzels um, cook thin. real thin. If it's really thin, you gotta be careful that you don't overcook it. You yeah. gotta be very careful, okay? Like my, my mushrooms God. right here. Look at that flip. That's even my non-dominant ham. You can tell I've done this a few times. You're ambidextrous. Yeah, don't, don't remind me. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is just turn that off and let okay. it sit. Great. So we're going to take our chicken. This is a dipped in a flour. You can put salt and pepper in this flour. You can leave a straight flour, whatever works best for you. Okay. Go into my, this is just um, hey, Here's a question. I, I have a son who's allergic to eggs. What would be a substitute for egg when you're breading something? Hmm. That's tough, huh? Honestly, is he allergic to milk? No. Okay. Because um, a lot of times I'll do, like when I do fried chicken, Yeah. I do buttermilk flour, then buttermilk, then back into flour, then go that way. Okay. So that eliminates the egg in that concept. Okay. So that might work. Okay. I'm not, I'm not used to being allergic to eggs. I'm, that doesn't, I don't hit that very often. Well, in addition to being a professor here at West Virginia Northern, you also are up at, you work at Ogilvy. That's right. I do work at Ogilvy Park. And they're, yes. they're having their Ogilvy Fest, like, right. which is their October Fest, That's all, it's October Fest. That's right. We're, we're finishing up menus, getting ready for Ogilvy Fest this, this year. It's the first weekend in October, so I'll be the one crazy and, guy running around the golf cart. And you're going to have some schnitzel, maybe? Uh, we're going to have some chicken schnitzel. Yes, sir, we there are. There you go. So you can check out the chicken schnitzel at Ogilvy during the first weekend of October. That's always a that's always a big event they have up there. Yes, it is. Parade, big crowds. They, they have beer up there, I know. Oh, they have lots of beer. You yeah. know, that's one of those things that started out as a thank you to the city of Wheeling, and it's just grown into basically three different venues. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it does a lot for us. So... Um, all right, so we've got our braise going. Basically, when I'm braising, I want to break down this cabbage. What are, what are the, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. What are the doughy dumpling kind of things that they make Germans? You know what I mean? They're, they're like, it's like dough. I know what you're talking, um, I mean, I'm thinking of strudel. Strudel. Apple strudel. Yeah, okay. Which, you know, if you make apple strudel, we've done it in class, you make it so, as big as this table on a, uh, on a bed sheet, yeah. you fill it and then you roll it like a cinnamon roll. Wow. And then you cut it up into pieces. That's impressive. So that's a good thing. So I've got my chicken ready. I need to get that, I'm gonna get that sauteed here in a sec. So you saute and then you'll finish it in the oven? Yes. Here's the thing. If when you're doing a breaded product like this, um, it's, mo it's better to, especially if it's not thin enough, it's real thin, should cook up just fine the way we're gonna do it. But the way we're gonna do it, you wanna make sure it's cooked completely, Okay. but you also don't wanna turn it too ugly. Yeah. Okay, we don't want it scary. Yeah. So Chicken's uh, tough to cook. Cause it, it is. You, 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 obviously you can't have it, you know, it's not like a steak. You can't do medium rare with a chicken. No, you gotta be 165 unless, degrees on that. Unless you wanna get people sick. Or, uh, and then you cook it too much and it gets tough. So right. you have to have that happy medium point right. when it and comes to chicken. And the best way to do that is with a thermometer. Yeah. Okay. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you sear this. Okay. Okay. You got this working now? It's gonna work now because I got, got the, the right pan. Touch. Okay. I had a, had a a moment where you know. <laughs> all right. So and I'm gonna give you. Where's where my tongs go? They're right here. Use this. All right. So what you're gonna do? We're gonna let that heat up. Okay. And then basically all you wanna do is make that chicken breast look nice and color brown. brown okay now a lot of people ask me well chris can i just deep fry this i mean yes you can but i have found that typically um it curls when you do that yeah the ends curl up and it's not as a presentable of a product you know if i've got six thousand to do and i need to get it done now yeah yeah i'm, I'm rolling with it you yeah. know it is what it is but if i'm doing it at home and you know this is something i can do this browning the day before oh really I'll do it you know the, do it the day before. And then you stick hours. it in the fridge. Then you put it in the fridge, yeah. And, and then, 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 then put, put it, it on a saute pan, put it in the oven, bring it, it back up. It tastes just as good? It tastes just as good. That's huh. right. See, that's I wouldn't right. think that. Yeah, so how we tell if that's ready, just stick a little in there. 
It's not popping yet, so no, we're not there. No. All right. You ever hear a sour broughton too? Sour broughton, yes, sir. What's what's uh what's sour broughton? So sour broughton, again, you're taking it's a long-term process. You're taking your um, uh, tougher cut of beef or veal, usually mm -hmm. beef though, and then you're brining it for a week, 15 days, sometimes wow. almost pickling it, and then you're going to take that and cook it in a red wine, braise it in a red wine, yeah. and then slice it. There is no medium on that. That okay. is well done. Well done. Right, okay. that is well done. I think this is starting to stir, so we're probably... Yeah, yeah you're good. We're good now, so... So go ahead and do that. We'll get this going. About a, how many minutes? Uh, four minutes aside, maybe? Yeah, not probably not. With that induction oven, you're probably going to go one a little faster. Okay. Again, the key is, because you'll start seeing here in a minute, it'll start browning right around the edges yeah. of the bottom. That's when you flip it. Okay. Because if it starts... The brown starts creeping all the way up here. That means the other side is way overdone. Okay. So um, while you're doing that, because again, we're just getting this braise going. See, my problem is when I do this, and it's probably because I don't let the oil get hot enough, is when I flip it over, the first side isn't as brown as the second side. So it's because my oil is not hot enough to Right, start. you need to make sure you have hot enough oil. And, okay. and again, if you're doing 15, 20 of these and it starts getting black, just change the oil. Yeah the product is only going to continue to discolor okay. as you keep cooking. Okay. So the mushrooms you did earlier, what we're going to do, I'm going to take those and I'm going to add just a little bit of demi-glace to that. This is demi-glace. What, what's a demi-glace? Demi-glace is... Looks like gravy. <laughs> well, in layman's terms, that's what it is. Yeah. But what it is, is you take a good beef stock and you reduce it by two-thirds. Okay. So you're going to start with a gallon and end up with a quart. So this, that takes a lot of time to make that. Yes, it does. Okay. It does. But it's real thick. You didn't add anything to that. You can if it's not where you want it. You know, you if you want flour a, or something. a flour or some kind of thickening agent, yeah. um, slurry, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit that back here so we're ready to go. Slurry and schnitzel. I got all kinds of S words. <laughs> some of them I can't say on TV. <laughs> you think so, it's good for a flip? Yeah, go ahead and give it a flip. See, that's you want that nice, nice. color on there. You so want we're that nice for, color. That nice golden brown. We don't want to burn. I want to hit this with just a little bit of salt. Because I want to, you know, if, you, if you're one of those guys that likes apple juice or apple flavoring, you could drop some apple cider in here. You could drop some apple juice in there. That'd be okay, too. You know, you can kind of take this any way you want to. But the really thing you have to watch, you want to break down that cabbage. You want to break down those membranes. That's why we just got to keep that going, okay? All right, so how are we looking there? It's probably pretty good, what do you think? Flip All right, it. let's flip it over, see what we're looking on the other side. That's perfect, that's exactly where okay. we want it. So what I want you to do is we're gonna take that off there. Okay, I could Close just transfer plate. this right into the uh, oven plate. or? Yeah, not, we're gonna. Not so much with all the oil. Go ahead and just put it on my plate and then what we'll do is we will put this in the oven to finish it. So okay. we're gonna sit that aside for now. Okay. Because we're gonna take our pan off here because we're gonna eat get those apples going to make that deconstructed apple pie. So let's say you have a favorite apple pie recipe, grandma made, that sort of thing. Just use the apple pie recipe minus the dough. No okay? dough. No dough. Okay. If you're, if you're not very skilled at doing apple pie and you're always using can, you can do the same thing. Just use your can sub. Put Whatever a little brandy works for you. in here. You can, yes. You can put a little alcohol in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to cook this down just a little bit. I'm going to turn it up to get it caught up. So if you can kind of watch that for me, Jeff. Got both eyes on it. <laughs> oh, it smells good. All right. So my braise is pretty much done here. There we go. I need that. So we've got our chicken. We're going to put up here. Okay. Our applesauce is just about where we want it. Okay. And what I did a little bit earlier was take this is well, this is why I call it deconstructed. So this is basically pie dough. If you don't want to make your own pie dough, just take pie just break, out of that, the freezer. Yeah, I got out of the freezer. Yeah. Dye it and just cook it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that in there. Okay. And then we're gonna garnish it with some of these pie doughs. And if you wanted to put ice cream on there, you wanted to put something like that on there, you could. Mm -hmm. um, whipped cream. And with less crust this way, you're probably... Uh, right. So, you know, if you worry about carbohydrates, I guess, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. So, 
you know me, I gotta wipe everything off. Yeah, I, I'm a little sloppy on my uh, dishing out right there. You're not That's the why only it's one. cooking up a storm. Uh huh, because you're leaving no, a storm in your way. No, no high pressure systems here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very stormy, very squally in the kitchen. So we'll put a few of those in there, set that aside. You, you have cookie cutters for that, right? That is correct. That's what I use. Okay. I could see you with a little paring knife cutting that little Yeah, no, I am right not here. that patient. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> I am not that patient. So this is almost like your dessert with your chicken. Mm hmm And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take a little bit of that. That is really thick, glossy. Yeah, Put a little bit of that right on top of it because Look at that. I don't want to hide the work that you did in making that brown. Okay? That's beautiful. Because a lot of, like, when I go to a restaurant and I see people and they just cover everything with a sauce. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what are you trying to hide? Is that, I mean, that's yeah. it? They're trying to hide something? Sometimes. Not every time, but sometimes. We're going to go with a little bit of our braised red cabbage with apples here. Go with that a little bit on the side. Beautiful. That, look at the color of this, too. That purple, the... A little bit of green in the apple, the brown and the glaze, the you got it all going here. I try to. So what we have today is our chicken stencil with the mushroom demi, braised red cabbage with apples, and our deconstructed apple pie. So Jeff, tell me what you think. Well, we have to cut in and uh, give it a slice right here. Chicken looks done, that's always a plus. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's why you have to use that thermometer. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, good. Let's try some of this cabbage. Nice and crunchy too. And again, if you don't like the extra crunch on the cabbage, go ahead and cook it longer. How am I supposed to eat this? Look at this. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when we eat and have a TV. Mm -hmm. The one thing about the apples are, these are probably a little on the sweet side, but if you don't like it that sweet, don't make it that sweet. How do you make them less sweet? Add less, sugar, add less brown sugar. Seriously, I mean, because that's one of the things I like about this. You can really control the taste. You can really control what's in it. Yeah. And you, especially if you don't make this every day. If you have a solid apple pie recipe you use all the time, go for it. This, uh, you're right though. You would know, top this, put a little dollop of vanilla ice cream on it. Right. I mean, that would go in there. A la mode and you got it made. I'd put that over the top. Well, you did, I'll did yourself here with the schnitzel, the cabbage, the apples, the, the deconstructed apple pie. Thanks a lot, Chef Chris. Quite well. But you know what? We're in Germany. We're going to do a toast. Prost. Ah, <laughs> oh, that beer tasted good. It was. Almost... Nice, nice room temp. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the cold. Just, like, just yeah, doesn't, it just doesn't give me old, any bad. Old world style. We're cooking up a storm. We're cooking up a strum. Strum. Oktoberfest style. Until next time, we'll see you from West Virginia Northern. I was the first in my family to go to college. I was looking to switch careers. I wanted the highest quality, but most affordable option for a degree. No matter where you are in life, West Virginia Northern Community College can make your dream of a college degree a reality. With over half of our students being first-generation college students and free tuition for many programs, Northern is the right choice for you. I can go to college. West Virginia Northern Community College. You belong here. Cooking Up a Storm, sponsored by West Virginia Northern Community College Culinary Arts Program.